In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Thank you for joining in prayer this day. Brothers and sisters, before the heavens and the earth were made, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were one in divine love. On this feast of the Most Holy Trinity, may we be filled with adoration and praise as we offer worship to the triune God. You are the Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. You are the risen Lord and Savior of us all. Christe eleison. You gave us your spirit to remain. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, your name is veiled in mystery, yet we dare to call you Father. Your Son was begotten before all ages, yet is born among us in time. Your Holy Spirit fills the whole creation, yet is poured forth now into our hearts. Because you have made us and loved us and called us by name, draw us more deeply into your divine life, that we may glorify you rightly through your Son in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, the Lord. Thus, the Lord passed before him and cried out, the Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger, and rich in kindness and faithfulness. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. to anger, rich in kindness, the Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Slow to anger, in kindness, the Lord is kind and merciful. 
bless the Lord, O oh my soul, all my being, bless God's name, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, forget not all God's blessings. A reading from the second epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The spiritual writer Louis Evely once wrote, In God there are three who love each other. God is a community of persons. God does not exist alone. God exists only in relation. He needed to be several to be God. She needed to be several to be love. He needed to be several to be gift. This is an important insight. It is of the very nature of God to be a community of loving persons. And we are made in the image and likeness of God. God's image is written large into our very nature. God's image is imprinted on our souls and burned into our hearts. 
The Feast of the Holy Trinity says that God is communion, God is relationship, and therefore so are we called to be the holy communion of Christ's love. We heard proclaimed in our first reading how God reveals to Moses what is of the very essence of God. The Lord is kind and merciful, slow to anger, and rich in kindness. This speaks of a God who is deeply concerned about humanity and all creation, God who will be there for us. And in response to this self-revelation of God to Moses, Moses bows down to the ground in worship and asks God for forgiveness for himself and for the Hebrew people because of their slowness and stubbornness to put their faith and trust in God. Far too often, like the Hebrew people in Moses' time, we are quick to forget that the God who brought us into existence and continues to sustain us, that God also journeys through life and history with us, loving us faithfully and forgiving our sinfulness. In the gospel, we heard yet another truth of our faith. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. To understand fully what this verse means, let's back up to the beginning of John's gospel. People often look at the first chapter of John and basically stop at verse 14. And the word became flesh and lived among us. This is stunningly profound. The incarnation is essential to our faith. But it is four verses later, in the very last line of the prologue, that we get the key insight to today's gospel passage. The verse, no one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. In Christ Jesus, we have the fullest revelation of God. What the end of John's prologue is saying is that if you want to know what God is like, look to God's Son. Look to the life and ministry of Jesus. In Jesus Christ, God experiences everything that it means to be human. Through Jesus Christ, God enters fully into human life. God knows our sufferings and our joys, our ecstasies, and our pain, and holds us up with loving arms when we are falling. In the words from a hymn by Bernadette Farrell, God has shaken with our laughter and trembled with our tears, and trembled with our tears. Oh, how God is crying tears with us and over us right now, shedding tears over the suffering and pain caused by this global pandemic, over the sick and the tens of thousands who have died to whom we commend to God's merciful love. And yet, God sheds tears of joy as well. God seeing his creatures caring for each other. The sacrificial response to this medical crisis. The outpouring of loving service in the manner of the ministry of God's Son. But again, God is trembling with our tears. Do not think for an instant that God isn't crying with us right now over the horrendous killing of George Floyd. His agonizing death has ripped open and exposed once more the deep wound and depth of pain caused by racial, racial injustice and inequality. God cries with us over police brutality, 
and every act of violence, the eruption of cities burning, the looting, the injuries, and further killing. And yet, there are the crowds of people who in their justified pain and anger protest nonviolently, wanting their voices to be heard and justice to be done. And the many good and decent and honest police officers who continually risk their lives for us. We've seen the images, members of law enforcement who joined the peaceful protesters, walking with them, bending their knees with them, hugging them, also calling for justice for black Americans, promising and renewing their commitment to protect and serve people of every race. In this, God is pleased. In this, Jesus is pleased. And after the nights of rioting and looting, who comes out of their homes in the morning? Peaceful and grace-filled people come together and volunteer to clean up and sweep up and erase the graffiti, wanting to restore life and restore hope. All of these genuine citizens are evidence, as Marilyn Robinson wrote, of that reservoir of goodness beyond and of another kind that we are able to do each other in the ordinary cause of things. Brothers and sisters, I suspect that most of you that are listening to me are white like me. The majority of black people do not possess the same privileges that white people do. Therefore, it is most legitimate that black communities are crying out for racial equality and for changes in a host of areas, police practices, policies on incarceration, housing policy, educational funding. Furthermore, Poverty and the lack of proper food resources leads to weakened health and medical conditions which cause members of the black community to be more susceptible to COVID-19. The combined suffering inflicted upon and endured by the black community right now carries the weight of the cross of Jesus Christ. We are called to carry this cross with them. Most of the time, we white folk are oblivious to the privileges we have in life, which are really no one's special privilege, but simply our basic human rights that God intends to be shared by all. to pray for healing in our nation means we must work for racial equality. On this feast, let us not forget the third person of the Blessed Trinity. Several Sundays ago, we heard these words of Jesus from John 14, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the spirit of truth. Brothers and sisters, if it were not for the spirit, Jesus Christ would be absent, and then there would be no Christianity. Through the power of the spirit, the living Christ breaks through all time and space, allowing his presence to continue in our world here and now allowing his presence to live in us and work in us. The work of Christ, 
The work of God's Spirit will not be finished until we human beings of every race live in the image and likeness in which we were made. God is a community of loving persons, and so are we called to be. St. Paul tells us today, as he did to the Corinthians, brothers and sisters, mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Amen. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and the church he shepherds, for all Christians and all who seek God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor and the starving, for the homeless and unemployed, for refugees and immigrants, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to confront the sin of racism in our nation and in our own hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and all those who were killed because of the color of their skin, for their families and all who are distraught with grief, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the black community of every city, that God will strengthen them in their fight for justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the voices of protest to be heard, that the work of racial equality may be realized, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are afflicted with the virus, for all the sick, for the elderly and all who dwell in nursing homes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For doctors, nurses, and all health care providers, for all engaged in medical research, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those whose mission is to protect us, that they may act justly and with compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died from the virus, and for all who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering our prayers into one, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us your peace in our lives, so that with the help of your loving kindness, we may be freed from all sin and stand firm in all adversity. As we wait for the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. To parishioners who are watching, a gentle reminder that if you are able to please continue your stewardship, your contributions are sorely needed. We now have online giving, we share, found on our homepage under the heading Support Us, 
or just mail it in. No contribution is too small. Thank you. Thank you for again joining us in prayer. After the blessing, Crawford and I invite you to join in singing, Sing Praise to Our Creator. The hymn text is found in the video description. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you.